David Marsh as... Dracula. By Bram Stoker. Adapted for radio by Eric MacDonald. Lucy, I do believe the weather has changed just for you. <laughs> I thought we would have nothing but rain before you came. And the sea. Oh, it's so peaceful now. Oh, it was very kind of you to ask us down, Nina. Mother does love to get away from London. Oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful. Mm. I often come here to the cliff top. Nina, before Mother and I left the city... Arthur called on me. Lucy, what did he say? He spoke very straightforwardly. He told me how dear I was to him, though he'd known me so little time, and what his life would be with me to help and cheer him. So, you are to become the wife of Dr. Arthur Seward? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but poor Arthur. You see, I didn't accept right away. I only made up my mind this minute. <laughs> He asked me if I could love him in time. And I said I was grateful and flattered by his offer, but I could not decide there and then. Mm. Oh, I had decided, of course, but I, I felt it might appear unseemly of me to accept too readily. Oh. <laughs> what did you do when Mr. Harker proposed? I said yes. I said it at once. Oh. <laughs> and I cried, mm. and Jonathan was so embarrassed. <laughs> I wish you would write. I do hope nothing's gone wrong. Well, did he say how long he would be away? He expected to be gone for no more than two weeks, but it's three since his last letter arrived. It was postmarked Budapest. You still haven't told me the nature of his journey, Nina. Oh, haven't I? Yes. I I'm sorry. Well, Jonathan's employer, Mr. Hawkins, has a contract with a certain Count Dracula, who wants to buy an estate here in England. Mm -hmm. But owing to illness, Mr. Hawkins couldn't make the journey to Transylvania himself. So, in his place, he has sent Jonathan. And I'm so pleased for him, but... I wish he'd write. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much, Mina. I'm sure Jonathan is safe and happy, and is no doubt on his way home at this very moment. On his way home? I don't even know that he arrived safely at his final destination. You have enjoyed your stay at our inn, Herr Harker, since you arrived. I most certainly have. And I look forward to seeing you on my way back. Must you go to the castle? Oh, young Herr, must you go? Do you know what day it is? Yes, it's the 4th of May. Yes, the eve of St. George's Day. Tonight, when the clock strikes midnight, all the evil things in the world have full sway. Do you know where you're going or what you're coming to? My kind, kind-hearted Frau, you must not worry about me. Here comes the coach. Well, then, please... Will you wear this? A crucifix? I do not know your religion, but around your neck, please put it. For your mother's sake. Oh, very well, for my mother's sake. Thank you. God take care of you. Oh, mein Herr. Yes, Herr Harker. When you are ready, sir. You know I'm to be met by Count Dracula's own coach at the Borgo Pass. The Borgo Pass? I'm sorry, I... I didn't realize I was so tired. It's so dark. What time is it? Five to twelve. I didn't realize the journey was so long. Now I must go. God keep you. But, uh, I say, come back. I haven't paid you. Well, nothing to do now but wait. Wolves. Oh, there's 
as long as they keep their distance. They're getting closer. Oh, my God. They're all around, watching. Why are they waiting? As if they're waiting for one final command. Oh. Help! Help me! Help! Here! Oh, thank God! Get in quickly, please! The night is chill, my hair! And my master, the Count, let me take all care of you! They've gone. The wolves have gone. You need not worry about the wolves now, my hair. No more worry about the wolves. As you say, the wolves have gone. Castle Dracula, mein Herr. Thank you. I will see that your luggage is taken to your room. Please, you are expected. You must knock loudly. Thank you. Dracula? I am Dracula. And I bid you welcome to my house, Mr. Harker. Come in. Thank you. Come. I will show you to your room. You will need, after your journey, to refresh yourself. I trust you will find everything you need. When you are ready, come into the other room next to your own where you will find your supper prepared. Ah, Mr. Harker, I pray you be seated and sup how you please. You're very kind. Thank you. You will, I trust, excuse me that I do not join you, but I have dined already, and I do not sup. Please, help yourself. Thank you. Come now. Tell me of the house which you have procured for me. Well, sir, the estate is called Carfax. It contains in all some 20 acres, surrounded by a solid stone wall. Now, there are, there are many trees on it, which some say makes it in places rather gloomy. That's a house. Well, the house is very large, and dates back, I should say, to medieval times. There are a few houses nearby... One, a very large house, has recently been formed into a private asylum for the insane, but it is not visible from the grounds. As a matter of coincidence, I have a friend who is a doctor there, Seward, Dr. Arthur Seward. I am glad the house is old and big. You tell me there is a chapel built onto the house. I'm sorry, I had forgotten. You see, we Transylvanian nobles like not to think that our bones be amongst the common. I do not seek gaiety nor mirth. I am no longer young. I love the shade and the shadow and would be alone with my thoughts when I may. However, we can talk more another night. But now, if you will forgive me, I must leave you. I will be gone till tomorrow evening, but you will not be bored. You have the freedom of my home. Sleep well and dream. I bid you good night. Good night, sir. Jonathan Harker's Journal, the 9th of May. Five days have passed since my arrival at this castle, and I have to admit to a certain feeling of unease and fear. Count Dracula has been most hospitable but is always busy during the day. And in the evening, 
As on the first night, he excuses himself for not eating with me because of having dined with friends. Our business proceeds slowly. There are also certain odd deficiencies in the house. Considering the extraordinary evidence of wealth around me, it is strange that there are no servants. And yet everything is kept in the best order. The Count has given me access to almost all of the rooms in the castle, including a most splendid library which keeps me occupied during the daytime. But there is no freedom to go outside. The main door is kept locked. I have been unable to post any of my letters, either to Mina or to Mr. Hawkins, my employer. The Count attends to that. It has also come to my notice that there are no mirrors in the castle. And something concerning this happened to further a fear I have of the Count himself. Has it been an illusion? It happened yesterday evening before dinner. I had placed my own portable mirror before me and was in the midst of shaving when suddenly I felt the Count's hand upon my shoulder. Good evening, oh. my friend. What is wrong? I, I didn't hear you enter, sir. Uh, my razor slipped. I've cut myself, I'm afraid. Let me see. Is it bleeding? Uh, it'll be all right. No. Let me see. <gasps> yes. Yes, it is bleeding. Razor, sir. My throat, you... Oh, be too tight. It'll be all right. Ah! Uh. <gasps> Forgive me. I'm sorry if I frighten you. <coughs> It's only that you must take care how you cut yourself. It is more dangerous than you think in this country. It was this mirror. I, I didn't see your reflection in it when you came in, and yet I can see every corner of the room. This wretched thing. The foul bauble of man's vanity. Away with it. <laughs> So now I must use the metal of my watch case as a looking glass. I cannot describe the look in the Count's eyes as he let go of my throat. Only afterwards did I realize at what he was gazing with such malevolence. The crucifix the good innkeeper's wife had made me hang around my neck. Oh, God. The castle is a veritable prison, and I am a prisoner. One day leading fearfully into the next. I have never seen the Count eat or drink, nor have I seen him at any time during daylight. There are no other living persons in this house. And this being so, I can only presume that it was the Count himself who drove me here from the Borgo Pass. But I am still of sane mind, and must write now of what passed this evening. The Count left me early, locking himself in his room. Determined to find some way out, I tried all of the rooms, including the ones which were generally locked. The last door I tried was only locked by some dislocation of wood and iron and gave way to pressure. I found myself in an octagonal room with one window overlooking that side of the castle in which the Count's room is placed. I opened it, and looked out towards his window. How my mind cringes at the memory. But almost immediately, I observed a dark shape emerge from that window, and like a giant bat with wings outspread, crawl head first down the steep face of the castle walls. For a moment, before vanishing into the shadows at the bottom, the head was upturned. Dracula himself. Sickened, I fell into a faint. When I wakened, two columns of silver dust seemed to be spinning before my eyes, spinning and solidifying into something tangible. Quickly and in fear, I lowered my head, half closing my eyes. 
you are first, and I shall follow. Yours is the right to begin. My kiss is on his throne, but you must be quick before he returns. Now you will be ours. No! <gasps> Back, I tell you. Touch him, and you will have me to deal with. Are we to have nothing tonight? I promise you, when I am done with him, he will be yours. Two columns of dust swirled and vanished before my eyes. And as the shadow of the Count fell across me, I passed again into a faint. I write this in bed. God has spared me this night. May he never desert me. Now is the end. It is the 29th of June. Today, I discovered a door in the hall that I had not noticed before. Beyond it, some stairs led down into the depths of the castle. Here, I found three boxes about six feet in length and three across. I opened the first. There lay the Count on some damp, newly turned earth. He lay looking as if youth had been half renewed. The cheeks were fuller, and the white skin seemed ruby red underneath. The mouth was redder than ever, for on the lips were gouts of fresh blood, which trickled from the corners of the mouth and ran over the chin and neck. He lay like a filthy leech, exhausted with repletion. His hands were crossed on his chest. He was either dead or asleep. I could not say which. The eyes were open and stony, but without the glassiness of death. For in them I saw such hate as I have never seen before, but worse. Far worse was the froth of congealed blood that had clotted on his lips. As I leaned over the coffin to search his pockets for the keys, the stench of decay reached and filled my nostrils. I could go no further. Now there is no choice. I must try and scale the castle walls. If there is any approach to escape and sanity, then I must take it. if only for the sake of those that love me. Where is your mother, Lucy? Oh, she's gone into the village to do some shopping. Oh, Nina, Arthur is calling to see me. I expect him at any moment. Have you told him yet that you intend to accept his offer of marriage? Mm, two days ago. I had a letter from Mr. Hawkins today. Mm. He's had confirmation that Count Dracula will shortly be arriving in this country. And news of Jonathan? The Count informed Mr. Hawkins that Jonathan left his castle immediately his duties were completed. Oh, Lucy. What's become of him? Am I never to see him again? Oh, please, Nina, don't despair yet. There may still be word. Lucy! Oh, Arthur, my dear. And Miss Nina. Am I intruding? Not at all, Dr. Seward. I am delighted to see you. Have you had any news of Jonathan? No, not yet. I'm sorry. My dear, is anything wrong? Oh, Mother, no, of course not. I have a letter for Wilhelmina. Posted from Budapest. Jonathan, oh. at last, oh, please let me see. Thank you. Oh. It's from a sister Agatha. The hospital of St. Joseph and St. Mary. Hospital? Dear madam, I write by desire of Mr. Jonathan Harker who is himself not strong enough to write, though progressing well. He has had some fearful shock, our doctor tells me. And his deliriums have been dreadful, of wolves and blood, of ghosts and demons. Be assured he is well cared for, 
and in a few weeks he will be himself again. I am so glad you received my letter, Miss Westenra. You have been very prompt in coming to Budapest. We have moved Mr. Harker into this general ward rather than leave him for any length of time on his own. We feel it better. Yes, of course. Thank you, Sister Agatha. Hello, Jonathan. Nina. Nina, is it really you? Yes, my love. My darling. I cannot talk now about what has happened. Mercifully, God has erased it from my memory. But take this. It's my journal. Yes. It's all there. My stay at Castle Dracula, everything. Read it if you will, but ne never let me know. Never. Please. Oh, my dear. Nina. Let us get married at once. Of course, but the sooner you are fully recovered... No, I, I mean now. Here. The superior will make all the necessary arrangements. Oh, my dearest. Let it be just as you wish. Oh, Jonathan, it's so good to see you back home safe and sound and looking so well. Thank you. Married life obviously agrees with you. <laughs> Disagreeing with us both, Mrs. Westinger. But where is Lucy? Oh, my dear, I didn't want to worry you while you were away, but I'm afraid Lucy's been extremely ill. Oh, no. Huh? Arthur's with her now. He hardly leaves her bedside. Dr. Seward. Miss Mina, Jonathan, how good to see you. Thank you, but how is Lucy? No better, I'm afraid. I've done everything I possibly can, but each morning I find her growing more weak. What seems to be the matter? Well, lack of blood as far as I can make out. But I don't understand it. I can find nothing in the blood. No germs, no trace of anemia. I don't know. I just don't know. Have you discussed the case with anyone? I've written to a friend of mine, Professor Van Helsing of Amsterdam. He knows as much about obscure diseases as anyone in the world. I've asked him to come at once if he can. Miss Mina, perhaps you would like to go out and see dear Lucy? Yes, of course I would. Tell her I'm not trying to keep her a prisoner in her bedroom. I'll go up at once. Nina, I'm sorry I couldn't meet you. Oh, you mustn't upset yourself. I'm quite well, really. I'm so happy that you've wed. Arthur and I are to be married within the month. Yes, your mother told us. Does Arthur say if I'm to get better? Oh, of course he does, my dear. He's called in an old friend to confirm his own beliefs that you're well on the way to recovery. Professor Van Helsing of Amsterdam. Hmm. Yes. I haven't told Arthur, but ever since I have taken you, I've had the most frightening dreams. I dream I am alone in this room. It's lit only by the moonlight. It shines through an open window. For a moment, the light is blocked out. Everything is completely dark. And the strangest things happen. First, the room seems to fill with minute particles of silver dust that spin and dance around me. Then, there is a longing that came into that pitch of excitement I feel when I know I'm to see Arthur. In here, in this dream, it's intensified, and I know it isn't Arthur I am to see. Suddenly, he's there, before me, and his eyes are blazing with a terrifying fire that seems to tear my very soul to shreds. in the band of wind, I toss back my head. He smiles. His mouth is so red. His teeth so sharp. Uh, uh, Nina, he, 
earlier this morning. You've been with her for over an hour. So you don't know what his diagnosis is yet? No, but God knows she has never looked so ill as she looks today. <sighs> Young friend, you say that you called me just as soon as it was possible? Yes, of course, And yet it does not seem possible that... Oh, you will accept my pardon. I thought you were alone. Professor Van Helsing, I would like you to meet a very good and dear friend of mine, and of Miss Lucy, too, Mrs. Harker. Professor? I am honoured, dear lady. You, too, therefore, have the concern of the child who is in such Danger. Oh, no. She has lost a very great amount of blood. It will be necessary to make the transfusion as soon as possible. But, Professor, what is the cause? You will both please believe me, for what I have to tell you is strange and terrible, but it is true. Miss Lucy is the victim of the vampire. Vampire? A bat. And its diet is blood, dear lady. Oh. Could it have escaped from some zoological garden? Julia, I thought these creatures were only known to attack sleeping cattle Arthur, and sewers. Arthur, Arthur, you do not understand, and it will be difficult. But for many years now, you have known me and you have trusted in me. You know that I am not a man of fancy. But when I tell you that your beloved Lucy is in great danger from the undead, perhaps then you wonder if I am becoming mad. Hmm? But does every legend have its basis in fact, we wonder? I have studied this subject for long now. Is it possible for some to go on living by drinking the blood of the living after they have been presumed dead? Can a man to a wolf be turned? A wolf? And what strange creatures exist on the sea bed? Oh, science wants to explain all. And if it explains it not, then it says there is nothing to explain. Yet we see around us every day the growth of new beliefs. I suppose now you do not believe in corporeal transference, no, nor in materialization, nor in astral bodies, nor in the reading of thought, nor in, nor in hypnotism. Hypnotism has been proven very well. Ah, then am I to believe that all you will accept is proven fact? You must trust in me now. I want you to believe in things that you cannot. You must try to keep an open mind. Professor... I've recently read a journal of my husband's that may lend weight to what you tell us. I thought it might help me to understand the misery and terror he went through during a stay in Transylvania. Perhaps we may discuss this later. Hmm? First, it is more important we make the transfusion of blood from Arthur to Miss Lucy. Oh, Mrs. Harker, I, uh, I wish you to run an errand. Yes, of course. I wish you to buy garlic to hang around Miss Lucy's room as much as you can. Now, all this we must keep secret from her mother. She has a weak heart, as you know. Must not be upset. I'll go at once. And Arthur, now is the time for us to set to work. After that, you will need to rest, and then we can talk further. Yes, of course. But before I talk, I must return to the asylum. I have work to do there. <coughs> Did you call me, sir? Warder, I wondered... I... Wondered if you heard that cry just now. Yes, sir, I heard it. In fact, for a moment, well, I know it's impossible, but uh, I thought it sounded more like a wolf. A wolf? Whereabouts would you say it was? The Carfax estate seemed to be moving off. Lucy. Lucy's in danger. Beg pardon, sir. Warder, I must leave. I, I want you to take care of things till I get back. I may be some time. Uh, well, that'll be all right, sir. I'll take care of everything. Uh, 
excuse me, please. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. You seem in such a hurry. I don't wish to detain you, of course. But if you could help me, it would only take a moment or two. Uh, of course, if I can be of any assistance. I live just along the drive here. But I can't get my key to fit the lock on the gate. But that leads to the car park's place. Yes. Is anything wrong? C can I have the key, please? Yes, of course. Yes. I can't get it to turn at. This gate isn't locked. That's why the key won't turn. I'm sorry. I was silly not to realize. Anyway, it's... It's open. I'm sorry I can't be of more assistance. But you can. I'm rather afraid of the walk to the house in the dark. Would you be so kind as to walk with me? I'm afraid that's impossible. I... Please, Dr. Seward. How do you know my name? Oh, I've seen you before. Where? You don't believe me, Dr. Seward? Look into my eyes. My honesty is there. I didn't... My eyes. Look at my eyes. Your eyes? They're so bright. Eyes that have seen... Now you are mine, and nothing can save your precious Lucy. Lucy, God! Poor Lucy. You fiend, you damn fiend. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Let me in. Let me in. Mrs. Weston, I'm better than healthy. Arthur, I am glad you are here. My dear boy, you must be quick. Lucy is dying. It will not be long now. Go to her. Quickly. Lucy. Oh, my love. Lucy. Your mother. She's dead. Oh, Arthur. She died. What happened? Professor had gone to rest. Mother heard a dog barking outside my window. She came to me. I was afraid. She didn't understand the garlic hung around the room and around me. She removed it all. But Suddenly, there was a howl from the garden. And there it was. The dog. He flung himself against the window and into the room. Mother screamed and pushed me. My head must have hit the bedpost, for I remember the room spinning. It seemed to fill with little particles of light. The dog seemed to have vanished. Then there was a weight on me, pressing, and I felt the pain at my throat. Jonathan, dear, this is Professor Van Helsing. He wishes to speak to you. No, no, please, do not rise. I'm honored to meet you, sir. Arthur Seward has told me about you. I hope you will accept me as your friend and will not be annoyed by any questions I might ask you. If I can be of assistance, sir. Recently, you returned from Transylvania. Oh, Professor... Oh, it's all right, Nina. You were there to do business with a certain Count Dracula. Dracula, yes. Has it ever occurred to you that this man might have arrived in this country? He, he, he can't be here. Mr. Hawkins would have told me if he had moved into Carlax. Your employer has been very ill recently. He has been unable to tell me anything himself, apart from the fact that he received an invoice for the delivery of three large boxes to Carfax. This was shortly after a letter from the Count saying that you had left. 
and that he himself would be leaving shortly for England. <laughs> this can't be true. Now, I can understand your horror, my friend. Your wife and I have both read your journal. Mina? It helped me understand, my dearest. But quickly. Dracula is here at Carfax with his two fiendish brides, whom I have destroyed by driving stakes into their hearts. Oh, Professor! Forgive me, but it is the quickest way, and if you are to help and support us, you must know all. Anything I can do, I will do proudly. And Dracula, Professor? Alas, no. He was not in his resting place. And now that he will have discovered my destruction, he can expect terrible danger. Now, Jonathan, you have no doubt read in the papers reports of the beautiful white lady who has been trying to lure innocent children from their homes at night? Yes. Have you any idea who that lady might be? No. Miss Lucy. Lucy? Please, dear lady, she is no longer the Lucy you knew. She is completely evil now. You see, Jonathan, this lady did not die of anemia. She was claimed by Dracula to be one of his unholy brood. Does Arthur know of this? He knows. And is accepting it as the brave creature he is. He will help me to finish a most unpleasant task. Oh, no. Not that. Not to Lucy's body. Do I also have your support? It will be needed, lest the Count should try to intervene. You have my support. Then I shall come too. No, my dear lady. We do not wish the Count to set eyes on you. At home, you will stay. Our friend Jonathan, you will meet me and Dr. Seawood at the graveyard tonight at the eleventh hour by the willow near Miss Lucy's tomb. Wait here for a short while and watch. Look. Yes. Over there. Through the trees. The white lady. Oh, God. It's Lucy. Be quiet. The, the tomb is locked. How can she get in? Watch. Column of silver dust. And she is gone. Now she is at rest. The rest of the damned. Come. The key to the tomb, Arthur. Now. Help me to lift the lid of her coffin. <coughs> Lucy. As I first knew her. And the life and color you see in those cheeks is not her own. The blood that flows in those veins is the blood of those who would become like her unless we are quick. Arthur. Look again. The face is altered. Her teeth. So sharp. The mouth. Cruel. Here is the stake, Arthur. Place it on her breast. Now the mallet. You must strike hard and with precision. I can. It is right that it is you who do it. <coughs> God, give me strength. God, rest her soul. <coughs> You will wait outside. No, no. Do not look back. Jonathan, in my bag, a small surgical saw. Thank you. Now, if you will hold the head 
Step professor is necessary. Good. That is it. The garlic next? Yes. Now to fill the mouth. So, and so, that is it. Now she is no longer the undead. Good. Now we will put the head back. So, and replace the coffin lid. <sighs> so be it. Now, let us join your friend. Arthur, are you all right? Is it all over? All over. And we weren't troubled by the Count? No. This has been worrying me. What? In keeping Madame Mina away from where we thought there would be danger. It is possible that perhaps we have left her in greater peril, alone. Waken. What? Oh, you. I am Dracula. You and your stupid husband, along with his meddling friends, have caused me much anxiety for this exertion. I desire... A little refreshment. Your friend Lucy was a most willing giver. Let me go. Let me go. Silence. Such a pretty throat. <laughs> and now, to bind the initiation, I rip this shirt. Cut my breath. So. And you will drink the blood, you Caesar. Drink. I command it. So you know now, and they will know before long what it is to cross my path. You are no flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, kin of my kin, my bountiful wine press on a wire, and shall later be my companion and helper. Mina! Mina, open the door! Ah, oh, that one, the day will come when you will bring him to me, and I shall not fail to do that which I intended for him before. But now, it is farewell until I call for you. <laughs> the room. The room is full of silver dust. He's been here. Madam Mina, are you all right? I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. Mina, what happened? He made me drink his blood. What does this mean, Professor? It means that unless we are able to destroy this devil, he will claim Mrs. Harkow for his own. Oh, God, no! Jonathan, you will stay with your wife while Dr. Seawood and I return to Carfax. We may at the moment be unable to destroy Dracula with the stick, but should we have the opportunity to destroy his coffin before dawn, he will have no sleeping place. Caught in the light, his body will rot and decay, crumble to dust. If we can do this... Then hurry, Professor. I will stay here with Mina. How long have they been gone now? Two hours. They must succeed, Jonathan. They must. Come in. No good. He has gone. Oh, no. The box was gone and he had destroyed the other two. Well, what are we to do now? There is only one thing to do. It's too late. There's nothing to be done now. Madame Mina, to show a lack of courage is not like you. Of course there's something to be done. Then let us know. The Count will return to Castle Dracula. And we must follow him. 
Just tell us again, good lady, of the Count's plans. The arrangements are always the same. Mm -hmm. When was here last? I watched and waited for Herr Harker to return from the castle. But he did not. Uh, then after a long time, a crowd of Skana Gypsy come from the direction of the pass. Mm -hmm. They're bringing the three boxes from the castle to be sent to England. If they stop here and tell me this while they eat and drink... Two days ago, they pass again and eat and drink. They are to collect a box and bring it back to the castle today. They will travel through the Burgo Pass and reach the castle before sunset. I pray you, if you will go, you will borrow my husband's pistols. These gentlemen will take the pistols. For myself, I have this machette and an account to settle on my beloved Lucy's behalf. And you will leave the good lady here. No. She will come with us. These are dark powers we struggle against, dear lady. With us, she will be safe. Come, let us set out for the Borgo Pass. What are you doing, Professor? And make around you, Madame Mina, a circle of holy water through which no evil thing may pass and which you must not leave. I think I hear them. Soon the sun will be down and the Count will waken. We must concentrate on getting to the box. Please, darling, be careful. Don't worry, Mina. And be careful to stay within the circle. I shall. No, no, we will wait here until they are almost upon us. But be very quiet. Now. Halt! <laughs> There's the box. Careful, Jonathan. Behind you. <laughs> Thank you. The box. Quick, the box. The sun's setting. Be careful. Be quick. Take that, you... Uh, Arthur. Oh. Are you all right? My side. Oh. Fine. Help me to the box. Bernhard, let me have the machete. No. I wish to do it. Just open the lid for me. There. Now cut off the head, Arthur. The head. The knife is too heavy for him to swing. His eyes. The Count, he's waking. Our father who art in heaven. Now, Arthur, now. Uh, Again, there must be no delay. Hallowed be thy name. Arthur, you're bleeding. Miss you're... Mina, I told you to stay within the safety of the circle. Look, he sees us. Thy kingdom come. Ah, no! Yes! Ah! Thy will be done. Oh. Arthur, Arthur, you're badly hurt. He's dead, isn't he? Yes. He is dead. Even now, his body turns to dust. Then I can rest now. Rest with Lucy. You'll be all right, Arthur. We'll get you well. Wait. The sunset. It's towards sunset. Soon. But you will be happy now. He's right, you know. It was beautiful sunset. In Dracula by Bram Stoker, adapted for radio by Eric MacDonald, David March played Count Dracula. Francis Gita, Mina, Christopher Good, Arthur, Rosalind Shanks, 
Lucy, Michael Harbour, Jonathan, and Aubrey Woods, Professor Van Helsing. The female vampire was played by Kate Coleridge, and the innkeeper's wife by Pat Peel. Other parts were played by Malcolm Hayes, Andrew Sachs, Madeline Kem, and Jim McManus. The play was produced by Glyn Dearman.